I welcome you to Scorched Earth. The map that treats newbies with disrespect. And I will be here for the next 100 days, or until I die. I die once my progress is wiped. So will the heat kill me? Or the vicious dinos? We'll see. We start off by waking up in the middle of a desert. Completely naked, no memory. But we have this implant in our arm. And if we do know one thing, it is hot. So we start off by gathering some fiber and berries to make ourselves some clothes. Then gathered up some thatch so I can make a pickaxe. Then got the materials to make a hatchet and then some spears. And cactus sap will keep you alive if you don't have water. We then started exploring a little bit. I was trying not to run anywhere, that way I didn't drain my health. But I found water. I then got some silk too, from these little white plants here. And then I started killing helpless creatures. Cause I was of course gonna need hide and raw meat. Then crafted up some bolas and knocked out this little jerboa. I was then able to unlock the bow and arrow. And when my jerboa woke up, I named it Jerb. Tell me that's not the cutest damn thing you've ever seen. Then started gathering up the necessary materials to be able to craft up a tent. I figured I'd need it. And when I went inside, I saw this symbol pop up. I'm assuming it meant I had extra resistance against weather. Then crafted up a bow and arrows and started killing things. I then crafted a club, threw a bull at this parasaur and then knocked him senseless. Then started cooking some meat. Made myself a shield for extra protection. And when the parasaur finally woke up, I named him Soup Bowl. Me and Supo then started gathering some berries. And then I started farming up so I could make a mortar and pestle. So I could then make clay. Clay is a necessary material for building adobe structures. And adobe structures are the only type of structure that can protect you from the elements. We then started gathering up some cactus sap and making narcotics. Then split the stacks so the meat would spoil faster. And then when I finally reached level 20, I was able to unlock the forge, smithy, some metal tools, all the goodies. I then started crafting up some tranks and decided I was gonna take down the Smarella tops. But he was actually faster than I thought, so we chased him down, tranked him up, and put him down. When I was on my way over to him, I saw an Enki too, and I was like, ah, might as well get it. So we started shooting him as well. And he went down a lot easier. And when my Morella tops woke up, I named him Lotto. I saw this water symbol above his head too. I'm assuming he held water. I then saw these two raptors roaming, so I decided I was going to bowl them. And look at this precision. Damn. Started loading the first one with tranks. And when he fell, I decided I was going to get my parasaur and go back and kill the other one. And he almost killed my parasaur. But when my good boy woke up, I named him Tor. I then noticed that my Morella Tops was drinking water and the number was going up next to the counter, so I'm assuming that he just did it on his own. Then started looking at his options and saw that he had some pretty sick stuff. Drink water, fill inventory water containers, pretty sick. I crafted a raptor saddle and this was my team. 
when I reached level 28, I unlocked the desert clothes. So I immediately started farming for him when I noticed I was freezing. So I ran over next to the campfire to warm up and started eating cooked meat to restore my health. Then crafted more clay, which let me tell you I feel like I did for the first 10 days. But I mean, it was all gonna be worth it for the structure, so. I then crafted myself a whip. And this thing was actually really efficient. More structures. Me and Lotto then went out so I could get more silk. And then we decided we were gonna kill one of our own. Kinda cannibalistic if you ask me, but he wanted to do it. I then started packing up all my materials, everything I had around my tent and putting it in my dinos because we were gonna go to a different location, one where I could actually build a home. And as we were rolling out, I saw a dodic and I was like, ah, guess we can't leave yet. So I started hitting with the trank arrows. And I thought this was going to be a quick process. Which then took almost all my trank arrows. And way too much time. Finally. Then my Jerboa tried killing him. Freaking idiot. Then saw a tech parasaur walking by and I had to kill him because they dropped really good materials. Then saw a little metal note and decided I might as well get it before we go to. I then spotted a kangaroo. So I figured I'd try to get it. So I threw a bola at it. Not realizing you couldn't bola a freaking kangaroo. Anyways... When my dodek woke up, I named it Icarus. And then off we were. We did quite a bit of exploring, but it took so long because of the Enki. And then when we made it over to this area, the Parasaur decided to jump. So I guess we're going down here. But he did lead me to my first base location, so... I started clearing the area. Then started making clay so I can make more adobe structure. And then we started building. Then saw this crocodile trying to kill my freaking Morella tops. Building this base was taking a lot longer than I wanted it to because Adobe is so expensive. But we were getting somewhere, just a lot of farming. I then started crafting stone foundations because I was gonna build a workshop and it was just cheaper. When I reached level 36, I unlocked the Ankleo saddle and then I started placing the foundations for my workshop. I thought it was a good idea to use wood walls. Apparently not. I then almost died. Look at my health. This Dodic, I guess I hit him when I was farming, and he was pissed. After all the commotion, I saw a Percoptodon that was stuck on the Dodic and my Morella tops. So I figured I'd start tranking him, and maybe he wouldn't run away. And he fell. Oh, he came back for more. And he killed my freaking gerb. I got my smithy placed. And he walks by like nothing ever happened. Then crafted a dodic saddle, Ankleo saddle. Then came the time to name my kangaroo and I named him Jack. And started farming up some metal with the Ankleo. And started being a bully because I needed hide from my desert armor. Sexy. Then made myself a crossbow, some metal tools, unlocked the thorny dragon saddle, and a couple of other goodies. 
and hypothermia once again. Crafted up some parachutes because I figured I might need them at some point. Along with a torch so I could actually see. And things were coming together pretty nicely. I also got to making my first long neck. Me and the Marilla Tops then went out because we were going to go try to find a thorny dragon. And that we did. Those who don't know, thorny dragons are excellent wood farmers. It only took about four or five tranks, but he went down. Then had to knock out another Jerboa. Because the Dota killed mine. When it tamed, I named it Jerby. Thornia named Draco. <laughs> Bro, so hyper aggressive. <laughs> We then got to making the thorny dragon saddle. And we went out with him to test out how good he actually was and pretty damn good if you ask me. Started making more wood walls. If only I knew. My team of misfits. Started putting more work into the base. And the workshop. More clay. Then started crafting up some long neck rifle bullets. And then I went on a killing spree. It felt so good. I don't know, just like a stress reliever or something. I don't know why I kept picking on kangaroos. I guess in, at the time I thought I needed pelt for something. Ah, who knows. I then went out and uh, noticed I was overheating, so took off my clothes and it didn't go away. Got the ceiling finished on my base, finally. And then put in some fancy dancy windows. At this point, I shouldn't be caring about aesthetics, but I need to like the way my stuff looks. I then got the kangaroo saddle and took him out for a spin and he, oh my gosh. Man was so quick. Not to mention the berry farming was like so good. Then decided to unlock the crop plots and build myself a little garden. Of course, unlocked all of the piping. Built a little foundation for it and started placing the plots down. My whole idea behind the garden was literally kibble. Just for the crops that you can't get from normal bushes. When in reality, I don't need kibble because of my rates, so. Me and the Procoptodon decided we were going to go out on a little journey. I was on a mission to find Crystal. And at the time, I thought that was death for me. I thought that was just a hole to nowhere. Then went to the top of this mountain and found some Crystal. A little did I know there was Carnos up here. Bullies made me fall down. So I had to get back up. And I was like, ah, maybe I could just shoot my way through this. Not this time, Jericho. I then started a yeet kicking them. And I finally killed both of them. So I came to get what I came for, which was crystal. Made our way back very slowly. And we found this explore note on the way home. And it's so nice having this jump. I then of course made a spyglass and some greenhouse walls so I could get the greenhouse effect going. Went back to the resource hill and started yeet kicking more stuff. And then I decided I was going to try to tame an RG. So I started loading it up. And then we sniped him out of midair and down he went. Level 48 not too bad. Then while we were waiting, we found another explorer note. And obsidian. Thorny dragon thought he had heat on me. When my RG team, I didn't name it anything because I heard my Jerboa freaking out and I knew that meant that there was a storm coming or some kind of event. And sure enough, as soon as I got home, super heat. And this is where I said Adobe is amazing. Cause I was perfectly safe in there. 
I then didn't realize there were silica pearls literally in my backyard. So of course I gathered all those up and made myself a fabricator. I then gathered up wood so I can make foundations for my fabricator. And then I combined oil and hide to make gas in the forge. And then we made ourselves a wind turbine. Never used one of these on another map because I never needed to. So I figured I'd try to do it on this map because it wasn't exclusive for this map. Then started making some polymer so I can make a canteen because I decided I probably need to carry water around. Oh my god, you know, why are these drops so bad? Then started making myself some scissors. And you know what time it was, baby. This was always the worst part, though, because you had to go bald for like a week. Yes. I then finally made the goggles for the desert suit. Yeet. That's why I call it the yeet kick. It just yeets them. And then I was out exploring, minding my own business. When I jumped right in to a Utyrannus. So I made my way out of there very quick. Spotted a saber tooth I wanted. When this damn freak show knocked me off my kangaroo. I am so over micro pigs. Yeet. Then reached level 62 which unlocked the RG saddle for me. And then I saw a storm rolling in. And decided it probably shouldn't be my time to go yet. I didn't want to die. So home I went. When a titanosaur fell from the freaking sky. I probably should not mess with this guy. I then made the leap of faith. But it seems as though kangaroos take reduced fall damage, so... Home we were. And then I just stared out the window for the whole storm. When it was over, I made an RG saddle. And I was also overheating, which is why walls that are wood are bad. We then took flight. Started exploring, obviously, now that we had wings. And we picked ourselves up quite a bit of explorer notes. It seemed like this map, the explorer notes were a lot easier to find than the other ones. And the drops seemed a lot worse, too. But I came back home, started making a bunch of standing torches because it was just too dark. Let there be light, baby. Then started finishing up the roof on my workshop, and I was overheating. Looking good. Then started farming up more silk. A lot more silk. And then I thought to myself, why not just use a sickle? It's so much better. Ah, so this is what the goggles do. I can see. Staring out the window again. And yes, stamina and water dropped so quick in a storm. Found more explorer notes. I then headed over to the nearest obelisk because I just wanted to check out the requirements to enter all the boss fights. And then we went out to the desert and I found this dung beetle and a perfectly placed poop under my bird. Enabled me to tame him. So I named him Duke. And then I saw a wyvern in the back, so I decided I should dip. And when I got home, I threw Duke in the greenhouse room. And then I started crafting up this ascendant whip that I found. Hell yeah. Then went to go check on my garden and saw it was coming along quite nice. Then crafted up more clay. And then we headed out on another adventure when I saw this sus rock. Which turned out to be a rock golem. And I didn't know they were on this map. I then found some obsidian and crystal up on this little hill, so decided I should farm it while I'm up here. And uh, let me tell you, I thought about poking them, but I didn't. When I got home, I immediately started crafting up some polymer so I could make a chainsaw. Chainsaws are really, really good at getting wood. I then crafted up a refrigerator and hooked it up to my wind turbine. And then I went out and started farming little bugs for their chitin with my chainsaw, and dude, it was like insane farming rates. 
and saw this dire wolf, and I was like, eh, maybe I should knock him out. More chitin. We domed that thorny dragon. Farmed him for his keratin. And then when this dire wolf tamed up, we named him Dre. Dude, another storm. I feel like it's been like an hour. Are you kidding me? Shortly after the storm ended, I took my RG out and we went to the nearest supply drop so I could start crafting up some cryopods. And when I came home, my fridge was unpowered. And I looked at the wind percentage. I, I didn't know it changed, so the wind turbine was actually crap. We then got our Anki, brought him up to the resource hill, and we started farming up everything. Came back home with a decent amount of metal, so I started smelting it up. I then decided I want to put some cool designs on my house, so I put some railings up and then started building a little incubation room for my future dinos. Building went into the night because like I said, Adobe is expensive. Started putting railings around it and then a nice little roof. Of course, had to put the shingles on and it was done. And then started making a generator because, like I said, the wind turbine is crap. Got it placed down. And then started crafting up some air conditioners for my incubation room. I then decided I wanted to build a fence around my property. And it looked terrible, but it kept the dinos in, so... I then went and farmed up some sulfur. Made more cryopods and then headed back home. Did I say headed back home? I meant headed back home in another storm. The third one in about an hour. I then crafted up an extra set of desert gear and made a pump shotgun. And then of course I had to start making the, the ammo for it. And then started crafting up some grappling hooks and now it's time to find a thyla, which happened rather quick so we just got on this rock where he couldn't get us and started loading him with tranks and he went down i then saw a saber tooth and figured i'd get him too which at the time seemed like a cool idea but the saber tooth has nothing compared to a thyla so our saber tooth tamed pretty quick i named him buh and then I saw a Rex and I was like, oh yes, sir. So I started hitting him with tranks. A lot of tranks. And after a good long while, he went down and our Thyla was ready. We named him Leo. I then decided to finally name my Argent Tavis. Tavis. He deserved a name. And then we waited for my Rex. And when he tamed, I named him Charlie. I then finally noticed there was Mantis on this map, so I've been hard farming Polymer for no reason. I made a Thyla saddle, and went out and started killing stuff. Now, the Thyla has a bleed attack, which is super useful. He can also run at a decent speed, climb up walls, do all the cool stuff. That's why I wanted him though. We brought him to the first cave location and down we went. I was walking real slow and being real careful because I'd never been through any of these caves on this map. I just didn't, I just didn't want to die. I then realized it wasn't so bad, so I just, you know, went for it and started killing stuff. Seemed pretty easy. And when I got here, I realized I had to make a jump, but there was a rock golem blocking my way. 
So I jumped over him, ran quickly. And this, for sure, was a pit to nowhere. If I missed, I was dead. So I was being extra careful here. Ah, pretty easy. We then cleared a path to the artifact room, which was just right around the corner. Uh, uh. And that's why we made extra gear. So we snatched up the artifact and started heading back. Had to make these jumps again. Once again, being extra careful. Thyla is such a cool dino. And out we were. So we started heading back home. Then saw the supply drop on my way home, so I figured I'd get it. And there was an ascendant sickle in there. Then started crafting up a buttload of electronics. And farming up some more metal with my Anki. I then started building a platform for a bunch of forges. Because I wanted to build an industrial forge and a chemistry bench and all the good stuff. So we needed a lot of metal. So I got them all placed down and... Got them all started and we were in business. Then made a wrecked saddle. Started crafting up a bunch of trank darts. And finally made that chemistry bench. And a generator to go along with it. So we got a place down, powered up. And you know the drill. I had to take it for a spin and make a bunch of cementing paste and clay. I was going to need it because I wanted to add on to my base. And I had no idea what I was doing here. But I just went for it, so. Once I got all this built, I realized that I had no way to get up here. But I don't play Ark because I'm good at building. I play Ark because I like dinos. Once I finished doing whatever the hell I was doing there, I went out to go get another Rex. So I started shooting this boy up with the Tranks, and he went down pretty easy. So we waited. But then a storm started rolling in. So I had to leave. And I took my anger out on this tech parasaur when I got home. But then I realized I wasn't taking damage from the storm, so I went back. And this is exactly why I do not need kibble. But once he came alive... Named him Rusko. And I spotted another Rex. So, let's keep him coming. Finally got the bad boy down. And then I saw this purple drop on top of this little rock formation, so I went up there and it was crap again. And I started crafting up a light source. Because the torches just weren't cutting it. So much better. And then as I was running by, I noticed that this Procoptodon, a very high leveled one, was stuck in my dinos. So I made a smart boy move and parked my Argy there so he had no way of getting out. And then I put him down. After a lot of shots. I then put another light source down. And then I took good old Rusko out for a killing spree. I just wanted to get him leveled up since I got him at such a low level. And it was going very slow. But my Procoptodon was finally tamed and I named him Krico. Then this right here is the exact reason why I started carrying a tent with me everywhere I went. It was like little portable protection. And then I got jacked up by this Yuda, man. He sent me flying away. So I went back for revenge. I started killing his Carno boys. And after finally getting one down, I went back up. 
And he roared at me again. But finally, after killing both of his Carnos, I started stuffing him with Tranks. And it was honestly taking a lot longer than I hoped. And then he started running, so I had to chase him into one of the worst areas to try to tame a dino. There was literally everything around. There was more Yudas, there was Carnos, Argies, everything. And this man was already beat up from all my tranks, so I was hoping something else didn't kill him. I had to fight all this crap off. Man's just kept running, like I had to try to keep catching up. And then I thought he was stuck right here, but dude gave me a smug look and booked it again. Bruh, really? He then backed himself into a corner, so we were just fine. We just had to sit at the top of this hill and start shooting him again. And after a couple of shots, he finally went down. But in a horrible spot. I then posted up, put a little tent on the rock next to him, and it took all night. But when he finally woke up, I named him Dejario. Then on my way home, stopped at this yellow supply drop. And it was dog crap again. Maybe this one will be better. Dog crap again. Home sweet home. When I got home, I made a Yuta saddle. And then me and Rusko went out on another killing spree. I was hoping that this Explorer Note buff would do something. And then we finally found something decent. Ascendant Chitin Arms, so I crafted them up. And then I got more air conditioners placed in my incubation pad. I then finally decided it was probably time I replaced the wood walls with adobe. Put a light source in my house. And then crafted up an industrial grill. And man this thing pumped out meat. I then got my thyla, and me and my RG took off. And guess what? Another dog crap supply drop. Then when I was traveling to the cave, I saw the wyvern trench, so I know where that is now. But me and my thyla made our way down. When the light immediately changed, so I was a little confused there, but... This dire wolf was jacking me up, dude. Maybe a supply drop in a cave will be good. And there we go. Finally something. And it was actually really easy to get to the artifact room. This cave was a lot easier than the first one, at least. So, of course, we started making our way back out. Contrast change. And just like that, we had two artifacts already. We then started heading back. And another superheat. So, I took my portable tent and got inside and waited. We then went in this crack that I thought I was going to die from earlier. And then this is where the third cave was. So me and Leo made our way back down into the final cave. And I saw the terrain cracking here, so I got really scared that I was going to die from something that was Ark's fault, but I was fine. There was really cool stuff on the walls in here. Found an explorer note. Look at that, that's sick. All four bosses up there. I then thought this was a bottomless pit, so I was trying to be real careful and thought I almost died. But when we made it down, the artifact was not there. 
So we had to make our way back out to try to reload the cave. And it worked. The artifact was here this time. So I scooped it up. And out we were. After scooping up all three artifacts, I finally got back home, made up a storage box to put all of my stuff for the boss fight in. Ah, oh, that looks cool. I then brought my Anki out and we started farming up some more metal. And then smelting it up. Because I was going to make a buttload of advanced ammo. And then crafted up this auto turret. Me and Tavis headed off to the Wyvern Trench. But when I stopped at this supply drop, these hyenas started attacking me. And I didn't think nothing of it. Until they started going ham on me. And broke all my armor. I thought I was dead here. I thought I was so dead here. If it wasn't for my RG, I would have been donezo. He saved my life. Thank you, boy. We then continued our trip. And there it was. So, I had the idea to place a turret down to just assist me in killing these things. And it did pretty good. Started collecting the talons. They're dropping like flies. Easy money, baby. I then spotted an egg. And I said I must have it, so I grabbed it. And we ran for our sorry little lives. Well, we made it out. Another supply drop. And freaking let's go, dude. When I got home, I started hatching this egg here. And the little boy was alive. And I named him Venom. Seemed fitting. I then started building this... Staircase, I guess. My intentions were kind of like a big wyvern platform type thing. I don't know. But then my boy was fully matured. So we hopped on and took him for a joyride. He was a lot faster than the RG. But his stamina was poo-poo. It was real poo-poo. But he was a beautiful boy. And then spotted a high level male Rex. So you know what time it is. Time to put him down. And after a good bit of time, he dropped like a fly. And we waited all night. And he was finally alive and I named him Denny and then stopped at another care package found some more ascendant desert cloth leggings attacked this titanosaur which was dumb and look at that team and crafted up a metal shield since I've been carrying around this wooden one for so long And then we went and found some explorer notes because I needed to level him up. He was kind of bad, actually. Now, I'm supposed to feel like a complete badass when I ride my wyvern, but I felt like a little crack weasel. I then started a fight I probably shouldn't have. The lightning wyvern is definitely superior. He was absolutely wrecking me. It was non-stop penetration. But I learned how to fight him. And 
once I learned I killed him quick. But then another super heat came along so I had to dip. I went back to get my RG because it was just more agile and I could, you know, turn better. And it was easier to, honestly, it was easier to fight wyverns with an RG. I brought along another generator and turret just for better coverage over the area. I then started picking fights. And winning those fights. I was jacking up these wyverns left and right. I then started patrolling the border, looking for a father load of explorer notes, and we found them. I then went AFK for just a second, and when I turned my head, this big bad boy came out of the floor and started eating me. A death worm? Dude, do you see how much he was messing my RG up? I had to leave and come back and leave and come back like six times before I finally killed him. But he dropped black pearls. Another explorer note. I got a ton of polymer while I was out in the desert too. I then had a bright idea. So I read that the Thyla, their bleed attack, deals 5% damage of the total enemy's health every tick. So, I did really low damage on the base attack to the rock golem, but the bleed attack, since they had so much health, was dealing a lot more damage, and it actually only took a couple of bites to kill him. And so you know where that brings me? A titanosaur. Yes sir, just me, a Thyla, and a big fat dream? And we started chomping down. These things have like 250k health, and 5% of that every tick is a lot of damage. He did 775 to me though. It only would take a couple of hits from him to kill me. And it, yes, it did take all night, but we finally killed him. Just a Thyla. When I got back home, I started crafting more ammo. Knocked out another Jerboa because I kept losing mine, just like the bulb dog. And when this one tamed, I named it Pokey. Me and my RG went out and we found an oil vein. So I got a pump on there and we started making a business. I then went back to the trench, loaded up more ammo, and it was time to pick on the bullies again. And it was going actually really well this time, like no hiccups at all. Too well. The ultimate goal here was to just collect as many talons as possible for the Manticore boss fight. But then a storm started rolling in, so I had to head out. Then crafted another generator and some more wires and more turrets. Checked on my oil. And it was doing pretty nice. I then saw the requirements to make a forge, so I went out and started grinding. Started smelting up my grinding. Dude. Are you kidding me? Bro. I'm stuck in the roof. I then went out and found some crystal and farmed up a bunch of it. Then stopped and checked on another supply drop and we found an ascendant helmet. I'll take it. When I got back home, I went to my forge to drop off all my materials. Are you kidding me, bro? Oh my gosh! Just a little more. Yo, bro. Yo. Son of a chucho, por que pinch? I was then finally able to make the forge. So I then started demolishing all my refining forges to make room. I got it placed down. And I started smelting. I then started finishing up my staircase to the wyvern platform. 
I'd been putting it off for way too long. And there was a reason because it was a grind fest. It took me quite some time. But after about 46 years in hard work, sweat, and blood and sweat, I was finally starting to get somewhere. And we kept building. And it was never ending. It went on into the night and day and night and night. But it was nice that I was finally able to do stuff through the superheat and not die. Then started adding the finishing touches and we had it complete. It was nice and sexy. More turret ammo. Oh! Oh my god! Yo. Say what, bruh? I then went back to the trench for the 96th time. But this time, I put even more turrets down. And I loaded them bat boys with so much ammo it could take down a kitten. I had them on both sides, that way I had the ultimate protection. But then this alpha, this alpha was soaking the damage. I didn't even know it was an alpha, to be honest with you. But in the end, it was nice, because I got a lot of goodies from killing him. I then picked up this dumb, thick, low-level lightning egg. And then I was being chased by the mother of all. This thing was absolutely terrorizing me. I just was hoping and praying that I could make it to my turret before he killed me. What, excuse me, who's level four? Left and right, I was taking these boys out. I was getting all the talons I ever needed. Until there was two. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Oh, God, please. Oh, my gosh, no, 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 no. E no. No. Okay, we're good, we're good. No. Nope. Oh, gosh. Okay, no. <gasps> I bet your pretty little tail thought I was dead. No, sir, I brought parachutes with me. And I took that mother sonner down. I didn't really have time to be mad about my RG because I was in shock that I was alive. But I had to parachute my way home. And it took forever. And it seemed like everything wanted to go wrong as soon as I got to this point. I was dehydrated. I was hot. A terror bird wanted my booty. There was a saber tooth on my left. I was overheating. So I quickly gathered up the things I needed to make a tent, got inside, and fixed one of the issues. But I was still dehydrated, so I booked it for my life. And now there was a storm! Home at last. I will never leave my house again. Just kidding. Back out we went. I went back to get another egg. I was trying to find a higher level one, but it just seemed like everything here was below level 50. Everything. I then got in fight with more wyverns. And I'm thankful that these tents... Those are turrets. I'm thankful that the turrets were there, otherwise I would have been dead because the turn radius on this thing is so bad. Three Lamentria Saddles. Three. When I got home, I started 
incubating the higher of the two leveled eggs. And got myself a level 56 fire wyvern that I named Raze. And then I started breeding my Rexes. We got an egg. Another storm. Why wouldn't there be? Started hatching more eggs. And then crafted a flamethrower. And shot this punk that tried to run up on me all crazy googly eyed and crap. Then went and checked on another supply drop. And there we go, baby. Our first weapon! I mean, it wasn't a pump, but it'll definitely do for now. My raise was finally raised when I came home. So I parked them and then started making some flamethrower ammo. I then took Raze out with me to go get a tapajera because I was lied to and told that you can shoot off of a tapajera and I thought maybe I can get myself a phoenix. Yeah, I was sadly mistaken. I waited for the superheat and uh, yeah, nothing. So I went home, I was surprised by two eggs. So I started building this little room for my Rexes to mate. And then one of my Rexes wanted cooked prime meat. Like I'm the one raising you and you gotta be all needy towards me. Yeah, the flamethrower was bad. Real bad. And then part two Rexes for party time and they started making me a baby. I then went out to get another RG. Oh God, please don't die, please don't die. Yeah, we survived, we were just fine. I then put down another RG, tamed him, and named him Lumi. I then went back home and started breeding more. I was attempting to mutate, which I got one random mutation, and I was trying to build a Rex army for the first boss fight. The game of Manticore. I then hatched that level 8 egg. And then I got myself a Listro and named him Lemon. He would give my dino some XP so I could focus more on breeding. And then I took my Lightning Wyvern out and his stamina was so bad. So he was just prettier sitting up there. More breeding. Non-stop breeding babies. Then made myself an industrial cooker. And this was my dino squad. Bunch of Rexes. And then made a buttload of paint and painted myself this weird color for the time being. And I got my first color mutation. He was purple. He's so cool looking. Then made a buttload of med brews. And I named the purple Rex King. Because in my eyes, he was a king and looked for fuzzy trees to find sap. And then I thought I might go try to find a phoenix. But after searching for a while, no phoenix. I don't think I'll ever find a phoenix. I then brought King in to breed with his family so I could get more mutations. And my box was coming along nice. I then started decorating a little bit. And I put our wyvern head up there. I then cryoed up some of my dinos. I was getting prepared for the boss. I then went to go make a lot more cryopods. And more ammo. I then started demolishing this railing because it was hideous. Imprinting. Breeding. Hatching. Imprinting, breeding, hatching over and over to get the perfect squad to fight the Manticore. It was never ending. 
I spent only just a little bit of time leveling him up. I then started having multiple dinos made at the same time to save on time. And then the same thing with hatching eggs, I was hatching multiple at once because I just wanted this to be over. I wanted to get on to the boss. And then I went and fought Deathworms for a little. But guys, this is it. I got my Rex squad ready and we're, we're headed off to the Green Obelisk and into the boss fight. Is, is he stuck? Is this just gonna be that easy? Okay. You go, guys. Already almost at half health. Jeez. Get him. Get him. Oh, there's death worms here? Okay, well, he's already almost dead. Uh, okay. Hey, you son of a gun! An explorer note in here? I'm stuck. Oh, okay, well, that was fun. Well, it was time to go back home. When I got home, I placed my flag in it. He was looking pretty. Then got this cool shield. And then went and rinse and repeated these caves. Starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. Now that I already ran these once, I knew about them, so there was nothing to be scared of, really. But that was the first artifact down. Then we headed to the second cave and... On with the grind. I actually got pretty messed up when I got to this room. I was actually close to having my Thyla dead. I was quite worried. Artifact wasn't here, but I ended up waiting. And after like five minutes, it showed up, so... There's two artifacts. One more. Made our way out, getting jumped by more bugs. I just couldn't catch a break, it seemed like. We then made it to the third and final cave. And started making our way down. Still being really careful on these jumps, though. Because this is pure death. Oh, well, we snatched up this artifact and started heading out. And this is where things got really scary. Yo! Oh, oh. oh my god. I was able to grapple myself out of this situation. I cryopotted up the Thyla. That was so close to death. If I didn't have grappling hooks, I was dead. This taught me very quickly that just always be prepared, over prepared. Ah. That was way too damn close. I came back home, had all three artifacts. I wanted to get the grinding done and over with real quick, so I went straight to the Wyvern Trench and collecting talons again. I needed 10 of each this time. So 30 Wyverns total I needed to kill. And yet another one of my flyers dead to a stupid wyvern. A stupid lightning wyvern. For some reason, he didn't kill me, though. Like, he didn't use his lightning on me. 
So parachuting our way out of this once again. This feels familiar. This time I just used my father to get home though. If I have any recommendations or advice I could give anyone that plays on this map, just always have grappling hooks and parachutes on you and a tent, always. And then found a level 95 lightning wyvern egg. So my life was complete at that point. I then finally found an Ascendant Pump Shotgun. I then went out to the desert around the border to go fight more death worms for experience. I did this with my Rexes for a little while so I could build up a strong squad to fight the beta boss. They're only level one and they hit this hard. So right here, I was minding my own business flying home when this lightning wyvern in the middle of where it shouldn't be almost killed my RG. Ridiculous. Punk. But it was time. We were already ready for the beta boss. I just got them all lined up, dude. Anyways, let's do this. All right, boys, let's get it. Actually doing more damage than I thought they were going to be doing. Not bad so far. We're, we're good. We're good. I think she's actually stuck this time. Half health. Can can you land? What are you doing? Can you land? Is she is she landing? Okay. Wait. Oh yeah, we're good. We're good. Charlie. Oh, gosh. Okay, you can land now. We need to beat you. Really, bro? You're gonna come at me? Dude, everything's dying. Everything is dying. What is going on? Oh my gosh! It is almost dead. Dude, it is almost dead. And now it's chasing me. Perfect. Yo, I think I have what? One dino left? Oh. You're pooping? Dude, my torpor is so high. Oh, go, 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 no! Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on, come on, come on. <gasps> uh... Oh, gosh, come on! Die! Oh, it's just me, it's just me! Oh, come on! You are so close to dying. Please just die. Oh, I can do this. I can do this. Oh, dude, come on, man. Oh, it's coming right out. Come on, come on. Eee! Come in. Oh, my gosh. No way. There's no way I just did that.
Well, that was it, boys. We just got this new cool chest skin. Went home and placed another flag. And got that manticore head up there. And then I looked at the requirements for a replicator, but it was expensive. I then spotted this level 125 Rex. So it was time for him to be mine. I needed him for breeding. But I finally knocked him out. And when he woke up, I named him Goliath. Then I figured I might as well get this artifact while I was here. I was a lot more careful this time, believe me. I did not want another incident. But we made it out safely. And then I made the most clay I've ever made. Because I wanted to build a wall. So I destroyed my forge platform and started building. And this, this was the final product. This was my beautiful wall. It took me a couple of days and a lot of farming, but we did it. I then went out and put down another Rex, a level 130 male. And when he tamed, I named his bad boy self Locust. I then made another forge and chemistry bench and put them up on my wyvern platform. I knew I'd use this area for something. I then went out and started fighting death worms for more experience. I wanted to have a stronger Rex army this time, cause that beta, that beta boss destroyed me. So I made sure that I pumped levels into these boys' melee and health. Grinding went on for days. I've never grinded and bred so much in my life. I just, I wanted the perfect team. The perfect ending to this 100 day story. I then once again prepared for the Wyvern Trench, checked on my babies, went and did the next cave, and this one man, I tell you, I just ran through it. I floored it. I wanted to be done and over with. I was getting pretty cocky with my jumping. Gotta grab the artifact and out we were. Then placed three turrets down at the trench and loaded them with as much ammo as I could possibly make. We now needed 60 total talons. 20 lightning, 20 poison, Twenty fire. I was here for a very long time. But let me tell you, three turrets takes down wyverns a lot easier than just one. Oh, bob and weave, brother, bob and weave. Yes, sir, bob and weave. In and out. That was a little more aggressive than I wanted it to be. I then had a very close death experience again. Oh. Oh gosh. Oh. Oh, yo, there was an alpha there. 
Hurry, 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 hurry. Come on, come on, come on. Wait, what? Oh, no way. That was so lucky. I then started a fight with the Alpha. I had to show him who was the man. I then got my first health mutation. Let's go. I wanted to make a tech rep. Started dyeing my clothes. You know I had to get that signature? Purple. I had to be looking good. And there he is, the man of the hour. I then went to the third and final cave, the last time I would ever have to run this. Still just as easy as the last time. Oh, we snatch up the artifact and hit it out. And my thorny dragon that I've had for so long was killed. I then got a really high health mutation, which was sick. Started putting up more decorations. Had to show what I was made of. Put all my trophies up. Things were looking good. I then, after grinding for so, 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 so long, was able to make the baddest machine. The Tech Replicator. It only took about a thousand death worms. And it only made sense to put the tech replicator on a metal platform. So that's just what I did. Look. Look. Yo, <laughs> Holy crap! Dude, it's so fast! And then we made a tech rifle. Oh, the joy. This thing was a freaking machine, bro. What? Is that a freaking turkey? What the hell? It's level 250. Can I tame it? I then started shooting it with tranks when it started coming at me real fast. I thought I could tame it, but I didn't know. I knew nothing about these turkeys. I've never played the turkey trials. Oh, there's another one, too. If they had torpor, it was very high. And then started shooting them with the tech rifle, and dude, they stored the damage. Oh, bro, they had so much life. Can you die? Can you die? Holy crap, bro. No way. Oh my gosh, oh, dude, I'm gonna die from this. Die. You. Stupid. Turkey. These things were vicious. And little did I know they took reduced damage from dinos. And did extra damage to dinos. But he ran away, so I thought I was fine. But then he came back for more and I was so scared, so I got on my RG. Still not knowing about the damage reduction. And started pummeling him. Well, until I saw he dealt 50 damage. Can you die, please, bro? Jeez. That's it. It was time for the final XP grind. And death worms are the only thing that give this much XP. So I was out in the hot desert for days until all my dinos had over 10,000 health and over a thousand melee damage. This went on. And then an alpha popped up. So I wasn't gonna stand down. I just kept charging them. And I got them. 18 levels just from that one. I then started trying to level up my lightning wyvern when he was massively jumped by two of these things and killed. 
so I had to help my Rex after I threw him out. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry, my little boy. Pair shooting back home. Hunger, once again, super heat, what else? Okay, and this is where I made a disgusting amount of clay. This build you're about to see, I did the math on it. It took a little under 140,000 clay to build this. But please sit back and enjoy, because this was the biggest build I have ever done, and I am still proud of it. Damn straight I made a pyramid. I mean, we're in the desert for crying out loud. Look at this masterpiece. This... This was necessary because Scorched Earth doesn't have much going on on this map. There's not enough things to do. So I needed to make up time. So I could reach 100 days. This thing was so massive, for no reason, but I loved it. All right, y'all, before I did the boss fight, I wanted to bring up my OG squad, the, what's left. We got Lato, Tor, and Icarus. They're all here and looking beautiful, but we're ready now. Gotta say our goodbyes, just in case it's the last time. We had the team ready. They were strong. And I was feeling really good about this. Can we ascend? I'm hoping. Let's do this. Come on, damage, 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 damage. Oh, that's really good. Not bad, not bad. Come on, come on. At least half. Give me half, give me half, give me half. Come on, come on. Okay, Rock Golem and Deathworm should be coming out soon. Yep, there it is. Okay. We are doing very good so far. Oh, not this again. Dude, can you please land? This is stressing me out. I'd prefer it if you landed now. Okay, you can come down here. Dude. You gotta be kidding me. 
What do, what do I need to do? There it is. There, there, there. Book it, book it, book it. Okay, go, 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 damage, damage, damage. Come on, come on. Of course. Oh, gosh. Oh, man, this is where things went bad last time. Okay, we can do this. Massive damage here, massive damage. Let's go! We did it, bro. Before we end this, I gotta give you guys a little tech action. So we made the legs and gloves. And the showcase. So sick. So fast. All right, you guys, we did it. 100 days on scorched earth. We survived. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video as well as extinction and aberration. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment, what'd you think? And I'll see you next time.